In the near future, robots are searching for any human survivors of the machine war. Computational neural networks gave birth to the artificial intelligence known as Dave, who saw humans as viruses to its master plan. However, even with its hive mind, Dave was unable to replicate. Dr. Deflo doomed humanity when he built the self-replicating 3D printer. Wait, what? Is that... Shh, you are ruining the suspense. Deflo's self-replicating machine gave Dave the ability to amass his own army, eventually leading to humanity's demise. So you can't actually 3D print an entire 3D printer. You can 3D print the rails and some accessories like the spool holder and drag chain, but you can't 3D print the motors or electronics. Yet. Yeah, we're getting there, but we're not there yet. So how practical today is a 3D printed 3D printer? So this isn't going to be a full-fledged tutorial because Reverbat, the guy who made this design, has lots of instructions and I'll link to him on my website. But I am going to do a quick uh, build montage and then I'm going to assess uh, this 3D printer. Dr. Deflo. To start this project off, we need to 3D print a lot. 200 plus hours of 3D printing. Good bed adhesion is super important for this project to prevent the 3D printed parts from warping, which would distort the linear motion of the 3D printer. The project consumed about 3 kilograms of filament, and I replaced my captain tape on my build platform every 1 kilogram. The name of this design is Snappy because all of the pieces snap together. This printer literally builds itself. Enjoy the build! It just snaps into place, you know? Snappy. Looks, if you don't put it right up next to it, it looks pretty, <laughs> it looks pretty vertical. <laughs> probably give our them an update yeah so as you can probably tell um, <laughs> we broke this so you're gonna see us we're gonna keep working on it keep building it up but we're gonna have to print this piece out <laughs> okay so the ball bearings in it and it spins and this it's the end cap, and I need the hammer again. I think I'm going to name this thing Hammy. So, I'm going to try and explain this. I got some of these pieces covering it up. I don't know if you guys can see. But what the ball bearing does, it's called a smooth idler. So when the filament comes down this hole right here, this smooth ball bearing is going to push the filament up against the hobble gear, which will grip the filament and push it down. And so this is just going to snap over here, but we won't do that yet until we load the filament. And then we've got the fan assembly, which we're going to do real quick in the Z-axis, which this is the centerpiece of the Z-axis. So this time I can actually have it going.
couple days ago, I printed off Benchy, and while the quality's okay, I thought I could improve it. So I went back in and I messed with the Marlin firmware, and I switched out my extruder twice, and now I think I'm getting much better adhesion between layers, which is gonna result in a better surface finish. The big question that I posed at the beginning of this video was, can a 3D printer self-replicate? And remember when I broke this piece? Well now, I'm having it printed off, so we'll see if this could work as a viable replacement to that broken piece. Well, with this print to finish up, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of a 3D printed 3D printer. So first off, it is a miracle that this works so well for being made out of plastic. And this can be contributed to just the ingenuity behind the design. The design is, I love it, it's flawless, um, most of it works pretty well. My only complaint is the smooth idler and hobble gear mechanism, the mechanism that puts the pressure so that the filament is extruded. And I just found that the lash that was here previously was not applying enough force to um, allow the hobble gear to work correctly. So I was able to fix that with some rubber bands, but really you can't complain that much when it's an open source design. I could easily get into the program, the source files, and uh, correct that mistake and it'd be working flawlessly. The second pro, which I did not expect, was how quiet it is. And I can carry on a conversation with you while it's printing. My Maker Gear M2 is actually louder than this guy. And so one of the reasons why I thought it was going to be so loud was friction. And so I was most worried about the friction between two rails, the interface. Um, but I found with a little bit of lubrication, it actually worked, works quite nicely. But you do have to apply lubrication quite often, which is kind of a con. Another pro is how customizable this printer is. Not only could I change the colors, but I could also increase the Z height, the X height. You know, I could make so many different adjustments to it. The last pro is that this project has great wire management. And while I may not have exploded it to its full potential, there are a lot of different routes I could take to seamlessly hide the wires to the ramps motherboard. The major con is that it's made out of plastic and I have to print very slowly and I'm still seeing some missteps, but again, I don't want this to be a negative. This is truly an amazing invention, design, and I love it. So what I recommend for you to build this 3D printer or give it away as a gift to a friend? And probably not. The reason for this is that you need a lot of experience with 3D printing. Um, I have built a couple 3D printers, so this wasn't a terribly difficult project, but there were definitely a couple of snags that hit down the line. And so kind of the reasoning here is that if you've built a couple of 3D printers, you probably own a 3D printer, which is gonna have better precision than this guy. And I won't ever use this printer as my daily driver. I'm always going to use my Maker Gear M2. But say you have a 3D printer, should you print this and give this to your friend so that he can have a 3D printer? And I would say no, because this requires constant calibration, you have to lubricate the tracks, and you are printing the filament that the machine is made out of. So you can literally melt the entire thing. I would not feel comfortable leaving this machine alone at home. And as you know, most prints take a couple of hours. So no, I would not recommend giving this to an inexperienced friend. All right, so it's all finished. But first I'm gonna remove uh, this piece, hopefully without it breaking. All right, so I removed this piece from right here and put it next to the 3D printed, 3D printed, 3D printed piece. <laughs> so here's the part from the Maker Gear M2, and here's the one we just printed. So side by side comparison, you can tell that again, the Maker Gear still has better surface finish. But besides that, they look like they might be the same dimensions, which is a great start. Okay, let's see if it fits. All right, to be fair, we had to hammer the Maker Gear part into, so. So it required a couple more hammer hits than the Maker Gear, but we do have a pretty good connection and it does function as it's supposed to. It is holding the Y axis to the X axis, which is awesome. And it still moves. So in this instance, the 3D printer could 3D print a replacement part but do I think it can replace its own rails? No, because I do not think it can print a smooth enough 
finish on one rail, let alone a continuous finish across multiple rails when they are connected together. But still, this is a super awesome accomplishment. I know I keep using the word awesome, but I love this. I'm glad it worked. I'm Dr. D Flow. Thanks for watching. You're welcome. Subscribe for more DIY projects.